my name is Nicole Hughesman and thank you so much for clicking on this video. As y'all might know from my channel or might have guessed, I love fashion and clothing and refreshing my wardrobe and getting great new items. But this also means that I very often have to declutter my wardrobe and I definitely have some videos even on my channel about decluttering my wardrobe, but I've never told y'all what I do with my clothes after I've decluttered them. And it's actually this really in-depth detailed process that I've gotten down over years of decluttering and cleaning out my closet that I finally think is like perfect. Like the perfect way to get the most amount of money from your closet, get the most reusability out of your clothes and make sure they're going to the right places and not ending up in a landfill somewhere. I'm really excited to share with y'all my process of cleaning out my clothes. But before we begin, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps you as a small creator. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And yes, I am super pumped to announce I am going back to uploading two times a week. So I will be uploading every Monday and every Thursday. So make sure that bell icon is turned on so you never miss a video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so you've gone through your wardrobe, you've completely decluttered everything, you've decided on the items that you just don't love anymore, they don't bring you as much happiness, it makes getting dressed in the morning harder, and you've put them all in a pile. So the first thing to do is to go through that pile and separate out the items of clothing that can be resold, the items of clothing that maybe they're not brand name, maybe you got them on Amazon, those are going to go in a pile to donate, and then finally anything that is too ruined to donate, maybe it's ripped, maybe it's stained, maybe it's just too gross, um, that's gonna go in the landfill pile. But if it's not too bad, if it's a minor rip, you can re-sew it, you can give it to a friend, you can find someone who might be able to recycle the fabric who is into sewing, just anything to keep fabric out of landfills because for as much as I consume on this channel, I am really conscious about where it all goes. So you now have your three piles. With that second pile, we're gonna come back to at the end when we donate anything that doesn't sell from our first pile, but we're really gonna focus on the first pile. And I actually did a declutter of my closet pretty recently, so I have quite a few items that are ready to go through this process. So let's go get through them. So I have a recycle pile and a donate pile upstairs, but these are all the things that I am going to be selling. And first, we're going to sell on Poshmark. Now, if you haven't heard of Poshmark, I don't know if it's available everywhere, but at least in the United States, it's a great place to sell clothes. It's very similar to Depop. I don't know why, I've just found so much more success on Poshmark than Depop. The great thing about Poshmark is you actually get to set your own prices. I really like Poshmark. This isn't sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I do sell on Poshmark, but I Poshmark is not sponsored in this video. Poshmark does not have any idea who I am. So <laughs> I have made probably about like $500 or so selling on Poshmark the past couple months. So I'm gonna go ahead and list all of these on Poshmark. Whatever I can, I'm gonna try on. Some things don't fit anymore, which is why I'm selling them. And so with those, I'm just gonna do the best that I can. But I have heard that if you actually try the item on, it's more likely to sell. short on time is just to take photos of the clothes and not to try them on as round one and then list everything on Poshmark and if something isn't selling after like four or five days you can actually update the listing with you trying it on and so I really like to do this if I don't have time to take pictures in everything I upload as best I can and then in four or five days everything that hasn't sold I retry on and then upload to Poshmark again so you've listed your first couple things on Poshmark great You'll normally see activity within the first 24 hours that it'll either sell or you'll get a lot of likes and shares that'll kind of show you the interest in each item. Now, if an item doesn't get a lot of interest, don't worry, you can re-upload some better pictures, make sure you're in them, you're wearing the item so that people can see what the item looks like on. After about a week though, if the item hasn't sold, I start to drop the price. I like to strategically drop the price by about 20% because then people get a notification that the item has dropped by 20% if they've liked the item. I normally find that I would say 80% of my items sell and then I get the fun part of 
packaging everything. So I have two right here, and in order to keep shipping costs down, if I ever get a package, especially from Amazon, which I think this one is here, yeah, I actually keep the packaging and I just recycle it, reuse it, so I never have to pay for packaging. I do have to buy packaging tape, and you have to have a printer to print off the label. But I find it's not really that big of an expense. Even if it seems like you're not getting a lot from each item, I know in the beginning I priced my items at like five, ten dollars each because I wasn't selling, you know, these super brand name items and really I was just gonna donate them anyway, so I thought, why not try? And I only got like two or three dollars from each one, but after doing it for like a month, there was just so much and I learned kind of how to market on Poshmark, how to correctly price items. I tend to go a little bit high and then drop it down because people like to negotiate. So if you offer it for $25, they're probably gonna offer you 20 and I was really just gonna sell it for 20 anyway, but if you offer it for 20, they'll probably come and offer you 17 or 15. So little hack, offer it just like three to $5 more than you want for it. And then when you drop it down, they'll think you're like giving them a sale, so. Okay, so you've sold everything you can on Poshmark. It's been about a week. You've gone ahead, you've packaged everything, sent it off. You should see money start hitting your account in about four days, which is awesome. So what's the next step? The next step is to go to a local consignment store. I really like to find a local shop that will pay you cash for your clothes on the spot so you don't have to wait for your clothes to sell. Here, I don't have a ton of options, so I use Plato's Closet, which is okay. I haven't always had the best luck with them, but for the next step, it's a good one to go to because you get cash immediately and you can decide if the prices they're willing to offer you are worth it and actually get those clothes back. So instead of having to ship them off somewhere and pay to have them shipped back or to try and list on another site, you can go and try and recoup some of the money that you would have otherwise just donated. I have some items from my last Poshmark upload that just aren't selling. A lot of them are like Halloween costumes or other things that are still brand name, but for some reason just aren't taking off on Poshmark. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these to Plato's Closet and see what I can get for them. So I just got out of Plato's Closet and I went and took a bunch of items and I got $27 in cash. It's not a ton, but it all adds up and I do this probably once a month. So I am back from Plato's Closet with about half of the stuff I brought in and a little bit more cash. So the very last step in my process of selling my clothes is kind of a dual step. I take this last set of clothes and I mail it into ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online thrift store and it's a great last option because it's really expensive to get your stuff shipped back to you. So I really like to use it as the last option because they do have the option to donate or recycle the clothes that they choose not to buy from you. So instead of just taking these to a store where I would donate them, I have one last chance to make a little extra money off of these clothes after they've been through Poshmark, after they've been through Plato's Closet or a local consignment store. Now they're going to be sent off to an online thrift store and we'll see how much money I can get back from these. Process is really easy. You can either order a bag or you can print your own label and send it off. I'm gonna print my own label because I don't wanna wait for a bag. Also, it just seems wasteful. The only thing is, because of quarantine, I think everyone's cleaning out their closet, so the wait is like 20 weeks, but you can pay extra, like $16, to get it sped up to three weeks, and they don't actually charge you $16, they just take $16 away from your earnings. There's also the option to get it shipped back to you, which is another $24. So they're gonna be recycled if no one wants them. And I'm gonna go ahead and send these to ThreadUp and just take the $16 hit because I don't wanna wait 20 weeks to see what these are worth. So this was it for my process of how I make back money from the clutter in my wardrobe and my three-step process. If you have any other ideas of how to make money off of the items in your closet, be sure to drop a comment down below so we can all benefit. And let me know if any of these tips worked for you. Again, you can check out my Poshmark store at, I believe it's Nicole Huseman, but like I said, I'll put it on the screen and I'll put a link in the description box down below and thank you so much for watching this video I really hope it was helpful and I really hope that it can save some clothes from ending up in a landfill I hope you have a wonderful day bye